Looking at the pictures from the Third Battle of Ypres, it's easy to see why mud and blood dominate our view of the First World War. But is it possible that these images distract us from what was actually achieved at Ypres? For more than two years, the British had held a vulnerable line overlooked by German positions. Haig's goal was to break out of this deadly goldfish bowl and push towards the Belgian coast. At the same time, he hoped to draw the German forces away from a temporarily weakened French army. An offensive in Flanders had the potential to achieve both aims. By the time the offensive had come to an end, the British did control most of the high ground around Ypres. The French army had used that vital respite to recover. In that sense, the offensive was a success. Lessons have been learned. Casualties were terrible. But the battle did have a more significant impact on the German army. 88 divisions, half of its strength on the Western Front, had been drawn into the battle and suffered a devastating rate of casualties. Manpower that Germany simply could not replace. It was evidence to Erich Ludendorff, the German military commander, they could no longer afford to be drawn into such attritional battles. Coupled with the knowledge that the US Army would soon arrive to support the Allies in Europe, he opted to launch a series of offensives in spring 1918, a desperate last-ditch attempt to win the war. Passchendaele wasn't a defeat, but it's hard to talk about as a victory given the appalling scale of losses on both sides. It remains a huge important moment in the war. It was influential in shaping the legacy of the conflict in popular culture. The unique horror of Passchendaele is reflected here at the Menin Gate in Ypres. On that gate are written the names of more than 50,000 Commonwealth soldiers who fought here in the Ypres area but have no known grave. It's a poignant memorial to an important chapter of the First World War.